Good morning, everyone. This is Captain Andu and the Dark Star Strategist here today to talk a little bit about something that is not obvious from the gameplay mechanics, but becomes very useful knowledge to have when you're at lower levels, like a little bit in the teens, but especially in the earlier 20s before you have um, unlocked the horizon research and and you're also applies in your early 40s when you're trying to uh, navigate deeper in a dark space and unlock a lot of the uh, higher level hostels and uh, some of the four star areas and things like that. So what I'm here to talk to you today is about planetary clusters. Planetary clusters are groups of systems that surround another system. So the system I'm in, currently in, Dirchman, as you can see, is one of the many subplanets of Daska. Daska is basically one of the three uh, faction uh, clusters you can access at probably the lowest levels that gives you access to planetary... You can put your planet next to... Uh, a three-star material like gas. So you'll see Daska, and there's usually pretty full here because it's very popular to be able to go right from your base to a three-star. There's also one in Rator, in Romulan space. You'll or not Rator. It's where is it? Rator. Uh, I'm sorry, Vendus. Vendus is right next to Rator, but uh, Vendus, and there is. Another in Klingon space as well. Give me a moment to navigate. And there is also Edra. Now, these are the lowest level clusters that give you direct near base level access to three star materials. There is also another one that's slightly higher level that if you're in your low 20s, you probably won't be able to... Uh, access quite as easily but these are 80 um over here in kaisu and over here in pekka so these ones are a little bit different you can't place your base in 80 right next to the systems you can do it in the gem but you can't do it in 80 and so, but there's a lot of gas out here and it's uh, starting to get, uh, these are bigger nodes. They're usually around 18,000, I believe. It's been a while since I've actually actively mined here. But you'll also notice if you're trying to fly here with an envoy, it is out of your range. It requires a warp range of 26, um, whereas the envoy's max range without Scotty is 22. So unless you want to just move Scotty into your bridge one would think they're stuck out of there well that's not entirely true uh, and that's the one of play mark clusters because if you live in one of the systems within a cluster like I'm going to go ahead and move my base up to Doloran here then you can freely navigate with any within any systems within that cluster without a problem so now I can send my envoy out to 80 and I'm going to go ahead and do it just for demonstration purposes so any of the systems nearby to the uh, cluster planet can now access the G3 materials that are in that system so we should see my envoy arriving sharp shortly here This is also useful to know because in these, uh, <coughs> excuse me, higher level systems, they also have usually one Latinum system. So if you're, if you have a low level Dvor, you can access one of the many Latin nodes and you can put your base right next to them and you can mine your Latin in the morning. This is very useful if your Dvor is at a lower tier and can't reach some of the further out systems which have higher mining rates. So I'm going to go ahead and send my uh, envoy out to here just for demonstration purposes. So see, now I could take it and I could mine the lat node with that or the devil or anything else. So 
that's the lower level clusters. Very useful to know, especially when you haven't got the horizon built yet. You can't access these G3 systems. It gives you more options as to where you can do your dailies. So if you can do yourself a favor, at least try to explore all of these systems so you can uh, freely access a lot of the nodes that are available out here. It's something I used to do before I uh, was able to mine further out with all my different, uh, my, my DeBoer, for instance, and my, uh, and, and before I got the rise, it was also very useful information to have. And it's not something that's common knowledge. It's not something that's completely obvious to those who haven't been out here before. Now, um, the next step I'm talking about, this is more for people as they advance further in their levels, and that is utilization of the discovery to access some of the deeper space nodes. So for, for those who don't remember, deep space is not even accessible until you get your ops to 38. So for many of you, this is not something you will, knowledge you'll apply right now, but just keep this in your hip pocket because later on as you uh, advance further in level, this will become very useful to you. Because also something that's been introduced recently is the discovery, which very important it, feature that it has is, of course, discovery summoning. Once I find it again, it's been a bit USS discovery summoning, which allows you to summon one of your ships out to it. But another feature that is not really as noticed, but becomes very important later on, is USS Discovery Warp Range. Now, going up to uh, the fifth research tier of this is nice because it gives you a bonus of 30. But what becomes really handy is when you reach Ops Level 41, the tiers start adding up very large by very large amounts. So at Warp or at uh, Tier 6, I was able to bounce up to 45. I can't access the uh, seventh tier but what that means here is if you have your discovery at a higher high enough tier already you'll get a very long warp range i have scotty in the bridge so technically the ship's warp range is 78 but that is higher than my tier 7 enterprise and that is higher than any of your uh, rare faction ships can even reach so the max range on rare faction ships is 60 the max range on your uncommon faction ships like the salad and the mortis and the um, centurion is only warp 60. so you won't be able to get nearly out to the lot of the spaces because there's a second set of clusters that are very important to you when you do get to butt dark space so having that nice warp range on the discovery and the ability as well to summon ships to it will allow you to complete a lot of the quests because if there's a boss, you can summon one of your more powerful warships fully crewed out for um, the fight instead of having to put Scotty in your bridge, which very much hampers your combat ability. And it gives you options to... Um, explore some of that deeper space. So one of the systems out there um, is the Sazav system. That is the Klingon berry. I'm going to go ahead and send my discovery out there right now. And for the purpose of the video, I'm not going to wait the many, many minutes it takes to get out there. I'm going to go ahead and send it in there. But as well as that system, there's also a Romulan version, which is Talvath which gives you four star ore and Hollies, which gets you access to the gas. So now <laughs> one of the differences between dark space and normal space is if you don't have a ship present in the dark space, you can't view the system. You notice it's grayed out though. But once you get the ship there, you can look in the system. So the way to move your base into a dark space system is first move the ship out there. I highly suggest the Discovery since it's got that warp range and it can get there quickly. And then you can relocate your base. And similarly to 
other uh, clusters, you can move freely, at least within a certain range. Now, this warp range moves 26, so now envoys, which are pretty much obsolete to you anyway, cannot move between the cluster, but pretty much everything else in your inventory can. So you can switch to, you can take a horizon, and you could take it to the main system. In this case, I'm going to actually take my cavort out there. I'm just moving the horizon for illustrative purposes. But my horizon, I can send it over to the Zov system. And I could be getting mining crystal that way. In fact, I'm going to recall the cavort because that's not the officer setup I want to run. I want to run with uh, my uh, crystal miner, not my uh, gas miner in the captain spot. But now that you're, uh, once you're there, you could take it to a crystal mine and you can start mining <laughs> the four star crystal that's out there, any of the nodes. And the nice thing is right now, especially that you're, uh, we're still at lower levels where there's not a lot of competition. You can also bring in your, uh, discovery and you can begin using that as a minor slot as well. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the my, the uh, Discovery, swap my cruise around a little bit, and put the Devore out there. Now, as you do it here, easiest thing to swap crews around when you got a lot of crew members is to swap to a ship that is at or close to maxed here. I picked the wrong one, but I'll, I'll pick my Bortus, for instance. And if you got them in the underbelly, you can bring them right up there. And you can have ready crews set that you can uh, go to mine with, and all you have to do is take your, uh, in this case, Devor out there, and you can start mining. Now, one question a lot of people probably have is, are the mining rates better out here in dark space? In fact, they're not. Um, they're actually lower than they are in Warp 40 faction space. So right now here I got a 536.918, but it's really close to the base. That's what's handy about it. So I could send out two miners and send them out there very quickly and do all the mining. Whereas if I go to Desica here, I have nearly 800,000 mining rates. So it's not quite as fast. So it's not a perfect... Um, mining situation but if you're there trying to uh get ahead on your mining mondays trying to go on the single leadership boards having the quicker transit times and the uh and the ability to put two miners out there very quickly that could make you a competitor and no one's going to really notice you opc if there's no none out here with you so that's a nice little feature um, about these little deep space faction clusters that if you're looking to mine, that it's the way to go and have it be uh, relatively uninterrupted. Another feature that's very important to you as you get higher levels is your ops levels increase as you're trying to do your dailies. It starts to require higher and higher levels as well. So when you look at your dailies at level 41, <laughs> it starts to require level 42 or higher hostels now it also specifies 42 for your uh whatever faction you're further along in your in, in your uh faction hostile grinding but uh i've discovered there's some systems in normal space where even though it doesn't say they're 42 hostels they still count for, for whatever reason. For instance, trying to do my Romulan quest, I can go to Ursfa system, and no matter what happens, if I hit a hostile in Ursfa, um, even the level 39s, it'll count as the 42. I don't know why that works. It's kind of a bug that's there. Uh, I take advantage. I took advantage of it before I got my discovery out here, but now that I'm out here, I can actually go out here and start to hit the uh, higher level hostiles because I have access to some of those systems. So I'm going to go ahead and start mining there, and I'm going to send my uh, 
hostile hunter out to one of the systems that can that's filled with explorers so I can hit some level 42 and 43 explorers. So this is a nice efficient way to start doing your dailies once you're level 41 and can send your discovery out here. Now more than likely you'll be have your discovery out to this level long before uh, you can get your uh, T4 faction ships out here because just to look at it. If I look at the Enterprise, I'm at tier 7 right now. So my next step will require a good, good 4,400 ore, and that will get me only to warp range 70. And if I wanted to navigate out to a 75 system, I'd have to put Scotty in the bridge, which on the Enterprise is going to hamper its combat capability. So being able to just have it travel freely between planets here in a cluster, that's very handy knowledge to have. And once you're there, you can look around. I think this was the Explorer system. I was checking these out last night. Yes, it is. So now I got some Explorers in this system, and I got some... Uh, they're all neutrals, so I might want to switch to a system that's all faction stuff. See what Inocula has. But you can do your daily quests this way, and you can travel between any of the systems in the cl cluster, and you can do it with your... Uh, hostile hunter fully combat capable because i promise you if you put scotty in the bridge under a pike moreau lead you're not going to survive more than one or two of these hostiles of any variety with any ship that you have out here that's a three star it's these they're just too uh powerful they're out in the six million category if you look at for instance in uh, the system here all the interceptors that are flying around they're almost five million strengths so you need your Pike, Moreau, Chen, or Talan setup, depending what you're trying to hit. And in here, it's all interceptors, so I'm not going to do this system. But it's a way to get around, move around, do hostile, things like that. And it'll be completely uninterrupted from your other daily activities. So now I can look around here, see what's around. Is it more Klingon patrols? Good. This is the one that has the Klingon explorers and yeah you have a seven million ship but you have the pike moreau chen so you can do a few more of these it's it's going to be a little bit slower than than your uh, normal hostile hunting will but you can see i just took out a level 44 klingon patrol and it didn't do too much damage so this is just a way to quickly get your dailies done it'll get your it's a way to get your faction rep up quicker. Once you're reached the esteem, uh, celebrated and esteemed levels, you can see I'm almost to commend it. The, the hostile hun um, hunting dailies, of course, increase in level range as you go up. So that's another nice feature. So it, the ability to get around and do all these reds like this, it's a huge bonus for you so it's something you'll want to take advantage of when you get to it um so that's really all there is for this video i just wanted to make sure everyone understood the power of the discovery and the importance of clusters as far as getting through your daily grind and how much it can be helpful to you when your warp ranges are lacking and you can't reach some of these further out systems so that's all I have for this video. Any questions, please ask in Game Chat or Discord. This is Captain Ando. I'm the Dark Star Strategist. Live long and prosper. I am signing out.